In this video, I point out key factors on how to make the ultimate Roblox game. I go in detail and in depth. I go deep in there, deep. With these keys, you should be able to unlock the door to a great game, right? Now, I am playing Epsilon Lineage Season 2. This game is unreleased. I was asked to review the game, check out the map. I decided to record it and record a video on the game, but I happened to get off topic far off topic so far to where i just started dropping game on how to make a game so here is the video for you guys right majority of this video is the audio recording um it's just talk over commentary over a game so you do not have to watch the video just play it in the background it's a lot better but yeah other than that let me know how it goes in the comments give me some opinions in the comments if you have anything to say go ahead and say in the comments because we're a community and we work together peace out enjoy this map is huge you'd need a lot of players to play this game in order to have a great interaction what is this where are those they look like just rocks little rocks there's only one path it'd be cool if they added multiple paths that lead to multiple areas if there's one thing that players love is having a so having a choice why do you think games with oh why do you think the one piece games how they they keep the game stable they put a character creation it gets you dreaming of a bunch of little fantasy world puts you in a little fantasy world because now you feel like you're in the game because you're able to create your own character you're able to choose what you want you have a choice rogue lineage is famous because you get to choose what you want i see no fuck you i got hella potential rogue lineage is so famous because you can make a choice if you, which path you want to take you want to take the obvious route you want to take the hidden route how are you going to take this route how are you going to get across there's so many choices like you're, you're always thinking when you play in Rogue, bro. You're never just on autopilot unless you're in a safe server. But you're always thinking. And that's how these games is getting where they are. Look at Deep Woken. Deep Woken is a game full of choice selection. And look at how fucking good that game is. Choice select, Multiple choice selection. That is how you win the games. Now. For you losers out there who want to make cash grabs. I'm sorry. You're not a loser trying to get the bag bro at least put effort into your cash grab bro because it's like yeah you made a cash grab it's generating some income for the time being but think long term what the hell are you gonna do bro make your game blessed so that so you keep get you keep grabbing the cash you didn't have to grab the cash to grab the cash you were sleeping that income generating bro games where you have a decision of your own are games that blow up for instance gpo Royal High, Meep City. You ever see those Naruto copies where they have the skill tree and you rank up? You get to choose. You get to, even though your, your, your primary element is earth and your secondary is lightning, you still picked fire. And then you have a Keke Genkai. Like you're good, you're good. That's game for you game developers. So many, I can name so many things that make games good, bro. So many things. I'm going to just spill out all the gamers to you guys because I I grew up flaming games. Everyone's always like, why don't you make your own game? I don't know how to script. They must think that I'm like some type of idiot. I don't know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. So I'm going to just spill the beans on y'all so that you guys can do it yourself. So yeah, you can get off my dick. Stop asking me. Because every time I flame a game, there's always this one guy who's like, hey, where's your game at? How are you the one to talk? Where's your game? Here, I'll, I'll, I'll spit some game. This is my game. This is my game. On the fucking Rift Gem. <laughs> I don't know any of the gate spots. Let's look at Minecraft, right? I'm going to compare Minecraft with Fantastic Frontier. Those are games of choice selection. And games that you cannot get bored of unless you stop playing for a long time. Because you basically forget what your ambition is. And then when you hop back on, it's like, alright, I, I don't know what to do anymore. But yeah, Minecraft and Fantastic Frontier. Fantastic Frontier and Minecraft have things in common. Achievements, right? 
Fantastic Frontier, you have the Itempedia, and you are rewarded for spending time on this thing. And when you're spending time on this thing, you're not getting bored of the game. For example, you can collect bird feathers. There's different rarities to birds, right? It adds content to the game because now it has people searching. Oh, which spot has this spawn? It has you gaining knowledge. You're learning something. This shit can benefit you in the, in the future. All these games I'm mentioning will at least teach you one thing. Except for GPO, right? I was just pointing that out because the cash grab and I was just pointing out the customization because that's what makes the game fun. If GPO didn't have any multiple choices, nigga, that game is trash. It would be trash. T tell me I'm wrong. Anyways, now let me go. Let me get on Minecraft's ass. Minecraft, you spawn in random world, right? You spawn in, you look at your surroundings and you build off what is there. It's a game where you cannot predict the future. You can plan ahead of time. You can plan for the future, but you cannot predict the future. Games where you could predict the future get boring because you, you've played the game without even playing it. You predicted everything. The story already went through your head. But games like Minecraft, Rogue Lineage, Fantastic Frontier, anything could happen at any moment. You never know. You always got to stay on guard, cutting the tree because you never know if a creeper will pop up. Even in your house, you're opening up a chest, you hope a creeper don't pop up and blow up your shit. You see what I mean? So we have multiple choice selection. So we have unpredictability. If that's even a word. I hope it is. It just sounds smart. We have unpredictability. Multiple choice selection. Now what is a third thing? And then occupation. Something to keep you occupied. Yeah, so the third one, something to keep you occupied. I'm trying to find a word for it, but I can't right now. Should I should have just put more time into this, but you know, I'm going a cappella and freestyling right now. The fourth one, socialization, human interaction. How are humans interacting in that game or in your game? Let's talk about that, right? Let's talk about. Let's first talk about the boring human interactions in games. Let's give an example. I'm gonna give you an example. Deep Woken. The way Deep Woken is set, it's set to where you can survive on your own or you can survive with a group of people. But the base of the game revolves around PvP. Most of your gains are from killing people. Your human interactions in Deep Woken will be very different from when you join a fucking vibe game. You join Deep Woken, you're getting fucked. Everyone's killing you, no one cares. Why? Because they benefit off of killing you. So the game is set. So you're set to look at everyone as an enemy. Because even your friends in Deep Woken can backdoor you. That teaches you a lot. That game teaches you a lot. It's pretty bad in my opinion. But at the same time, it's very interesting. Very interesting. Because it's like you don't know who to trust. And sometimes you can find that one person who's pretty cool. You, you see, you can find people who can separate out of the group. You're able to categorize people, bro. It's, it's human interactions best part is you meet different types of people when everything is different when nothing's the same when everything's different your game becomes interesting it allows it gives it adds room for exploration so if your game is predictable it is trash if the human interaction is reduced your game is trash some games are meant to be played alone but those games get personal they have a storyline behind it every game where you're playing alone there's somewhat storyline, unless it's a sandbox, but there's always some type of storyline behind it, which gives you a reason to push forward. Cause it's like, oh, I want to build my own storyline. You see, you don't even know what's going to happen. So if we were to look at everything I pointed out, I can make a part two, part three, part four. I don't care, bro. I can keep doing this. I was going to make everything simpler. Everything I just said, I'm going to summarize it for you. So number one, we have predictability. How predictable is your game? Do people already know what they're playing? Or do they have to explore and figure it out? You see, the second option is a lot. The second option is hella interesting because you don't know what's going to happen. So it leaves a mystery. Will you solve this mystery? Do you want to solve this mystery? Do you know if you're capable? It adds questions. And then we build off from that. With these questions, are you provided with choices? Are you allowed to make decisions? Look at Rogue Lineage. There's lots of decision, decision making and that game's going pretty far. Deep Woken, lots of decision making. That game is going pretty far. 
Look at all the games that people are copying. Like the Naruto copies that are closed community. Lots of choice selection. You have a skill tree, all that stuff. You have a clan, all, a whole bunch of stuff that make you unique. That allow you to be unique. Take those choices. And when you use these choices, you develop a story. So boom, you have your story. Is your story plain and simple or is there no story? You know, without a story, it kind of cuts off the connection here. You see how I'm connecting the dots? You don't have a story, it cuts off the fucking connection. So make sure your person has a reason to play your fucking game, bro. And make sure they're willing to sacrifice in order to play it. And that's just if you want the player's attention. It's fun. Because in Rogue Lineage, you will develop a story based off of human interaction alone. Because let's say somebody whoops your ass. Now you're mad and you want revenge. You're going to go get strong and beat his ass. You see? The developer didn't even have to add anything to the game. You created that story for yourself. There's a lot of things I can mention about this motherfucker. But I'm going to just not do it. Because Cap Casino... And y'all think I can't create a good game. I can. If I if I knew how to script, I got it. So we went from predictability to choice selection to storyline. And with storyline leads to interactions. Because these games have, you know what I'm saying? If you're making a good game, it's best to have other people involved. And if they're involved, it's better off them being involved on a personal level. Especially games that allow you to be different because you get to see what type of person they are. What type of people it is right you get to decide whether or not this person's fit to be in your story or not human interactions now how will you develop your game to get the human interaction that you want that's all up to you you know you're the game developer you make a game that you want nobody has to do everything i'm saying right now but if you're doing it at least make it unique add some spice to your game too don't be afraid to add some seasoning to the chicken bro don't be afraid to do that bro it's not too spicy because you realize anyways yeah that's roblox developer game for you developers if you want to make a good game a lot of you guys been telling me cap casino you're not about shit stop talking stop shitting on my game you don't have a game suck balls my game is in the description play it and you'll understand what i mean my i have the best game it's a death note game anyways that's youtube game for you guys I don't give a fuck what you do with it. Just make something fun so that I can go home from work for a long day, you know, and then just cool out and play a very fun game because Roblox is at a shortage of video games. So if you guys know any developers or know anybody, please share this video to them so they can get their lazy asses back in their chairs where they belong because you're lazy and start fucking cooking up a good game for me to play so I can give you my money. And yes, give you my fucking money. Yes, bro. Make the game, bro. Jeez, man. I'm bored as hell. We bored as hell. In your feet smell, nigga. Hey, no, nah, let me stop, bro. But yo, I'm just joking. But yo, that is how you make a very good game. And by the way, none of this is planned. I'm just going off the top of my head. I'll try to organize it with the editing. But other than that, yo, make a good game. Make me proud. If you want me to test your game and make a video, you know who to talk to. Just bring something to the table. If you're broke, you know, we can work something out. Hope you guys have a great day. I'm going to stare at the chair because I don't care. No, I care about you guys, though, but no. Have a great day. Peace out.